Today I wanted to talk about that one extremely brief time that Spider-Man became an omnipotent being. Because for some reason, I just really love the trope of a superhero stumbling his way into godhood, as it's always interested me about what they do with that kind of power. Like Dr. Manhattan with all his power essentially just lets his omnipotency control him. Batman just tries to solve who the Joker really is and then just meets up with Joe Chill and bullies him. And Liu Kang rewrites all of Mortal Kombat fanfiction. But what Spider-Man does with his godhood is really cool and a lot of people really don't know about it, so I want to tell you about it today. Now, as we open up the story, it takes place during the Secret Wars event, in which Black Suit Spidey and Wolverine are trying to destroy deadly robots, alongside other heroes like Captain America and The Thing, while Mr. Fantastic struggles to come up with a plan to stop Doom and the Beyonder. Because if things weren't already complicated as it is, the heroes also have to deal with Galactus, who will soon eat their world entirely. However, during Galactus's process of absorbing their world, it comes to a grinding halt, almost as if someone stole his powers, to which a not-so-distant future Dr. Doom, now omnipotent, says that that's exactly what had happened. During Doom's process of stealing Galactus's powers through the means of comic book mumbo-jumbo, Doom had gained immeasurable power and from his subconscious made his fears alongside every other hero's fears come to reality. So Wolverine saw Jean Grey alive again, and Spider-Man saw Gwen Stacy alive again as well, leading Wolverine and Spider-Man to chase after one another's dead girlfriends. Until their paths eventually intertwined, confused as to how they could both see them one minute and then the next, Oof. But through a streak of fiery fury, Jean Grey as the phoenix bursts from the ground, sending the two of them flying with her like magnets, as Wolverine realizes through smelling her that it's not Jean, but it's Doctor Doom, as the three of them fly through a tear in space into pure light. Bursting through the tear in space, Spidey alongside Wolverine fall into a land filled with indescribable monsters. Meanwhile, up in the space above them, Doctor Doom fights with the Beyonder to absorb his powers. As Doom would drive the Beyonder to his knees, absorbing every last drop of the Beyonder's power. And when all of the Beyonder's power was soon to be claimed by Doom himself, a little detour would occur as a monster flung Wolverine into the Beyonder's orb of power, which would send Wolverine hurtling back to the ground, hurt like he had never been hurt before. Awakening to Spidey, Wolverine started to speak gibberish about Jean Grey, while reality started to distort around him, causing his adamantium claws to become bone once more. After which Wolverine says that this power he wields is too much for him, as he transfers it over to Spidey by stabbing stabbing him, making Spidey essentially omnipotent. In a flash, the entire universe changes around them, becoming New Parker City, with JJ interviewing Peter on how he became the most beloved superhero in all of time, with such immeasurable power. Peter says to Jonah that he would have Wolverine to thank for all of that, but as far as the rest of the interview goes for right now, it'll have to wait. Because Green Goblin just murdered Uncle Ben in his own home, laughing maniacally. And you'd think Peter would freak out, but no. Peter just says, oh. No sweat, I'll just revive him in a couple seconds. As he webs up Green Goblin to bring him outside and obliterate him alongside the rest of the trash, cause Aunt May really doesn't like it when he does it inside. However, leaving the house, there are plenty of villains waiting outside for him, including Galactus, so Spidey hands Green Goblin over to JJ, telling him that this will only take a moment. Because as Doc Ock leaps towards Spidey, he says aloud that he has the power to redistribute matter, meaning he can modify one thing into another. So he puts his pointer finger on Otto and decides he can turn him into something a lot more useful, turning Doc Ock into plants, surprised that Doc Ock made so many with such a little energy. Afterwards, he hands JJ a camera made from thin air and tells him to take pictures while Spidey wipes the floor with every other villain, ripping Ultron in half, growing into a giant and stepping on several villains, then shooting a huge beam of energy at several more villains like Dr. Manhattan, and finally knocking out Galactus with a sucker punch. Once the fighting had come to an end, Spidey would ask JJ if he got everything, adding that if he didn't, Spidey can just rewind the whole fight and do it all over again. Later, as they both walk the streets of New Parker City, JJ says to Peter that this city is like the city of the future, to which Peter says that he kind of brought the city here from the 32nd century, as Uncle Ben runs towards them, yelling that he has both Gwen and Mary Jane on the phone until getting hit by a car and dying. JJ starts to rightfully freak out, but while this is happening, Peter just nonchalantly goes, damn, that's the same guy I saw speeding the other day that I should have stopped. Oh well. Spidey then revives Uncle Ben by reaching back in time to stop him from ever getting hit in the first place, and tells Uncle Ben that after the interview, they'll meet up for dinner. But while asking JJ if he has any more questions, JJ says that Venom just killed Uncle Ben. Peter looking over just goes, oh yeah, he did. Well, don't worry about it. It happens all the time. 
I'll just fix him back up. And in the process, JJ asks how long he's even had this power for. Peter explains that he's had this power for one billionth of a second, but that he won't be keeping this power for much longer, because it's destined for another in the not too distant future. Showing JJ battle world and everything currently going on, and himself still in that moment of realizing the power he possesses. Telling JJ that in that moment he gained powers. He was everywhere, everything, and everyone. And in that moment, which is still this moment, he remade all all of creation. But the moment was short and his godhood momentary, as the power was destined for another. Perhaps only because Spidey was still mentally staggering from his new awareness, Doom was able to take it. After which Doom soon realized that with the Beyonder's powers he'd soon fall from godhood as well, as the power was not his own and could see into the future that one hero would rise to the occasion and challenge him and defeat him. But in the meantime, he'd wipe Wolverine and Spidey's minds from ever knowing they possessed the power of a god, let alone saw what was to come in the future. Because Doom, as proud as he is, wanted to hold on to his grasp at godhood for as long as possible, as we see Spidey back at the very same moment we began the story. With the two of them experiencing a slight form of deja vu, before they both just shake their heads and head back out into the fight, none the wiser that they were both gods for only a few moments. Now, I hope y'all like this story, and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe, and as always, I'll catch y'all on the flip side.